once again uh, I'd like to say good afternoon to everyone and um, again I want to uh, let you know I hope everything has been going all right it is so odd because I, I don't we're so used to for years and years having regular most of us conversation at least acknowledging talking about trivial things or even real things just that relationship is just not there it's very 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 odd for me um, not that the busyness has eased up any uh, for me probably not for you either I don't know but um, hope that you enjoyed the service last night Thursday and uh, I was thinking this morning as I'm thinking about all the constant changes going on I, I wonder uh, in all that's going on in the Christian life right now um, or in, in the world in America in our area whatever I wonder uh, how many Bible believing Christians see the devil working now as soon as I bring that up you go oh yeah I can that's not what I meant uh, I wonder how many understand what it is that he's trying to do not 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 revelation end time stuff I mean now uh, I wonder if we even bring up his name in conversation um, if, if all of this that I just said to you is a well to be honest preacher no do we really believe in a real being uh, who is our adversary I mean he's a real being and he's our enemy you know the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2 and verse number 11 lest Satan uh, should get an advantage on us for we are not ignorant of his devices now the devices are things he uses the ways he goes about doing things these are the devices the Bible also says in 1 Peter chapter number 5 and verse 8 be sober and very serious think be vigilant stay on guard why because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour um, today if if a if a person in a group sometimes within our own family uh, to show you that we're, we're not really thinking and acting the way that we should the next time something comes up among friends neighbors um, uh, in a grocery line um, uh, on a phone conversation whatever it is uh, bring up the devil's name and and talk about him as as real and and uh, the reality of evil spirits and which is what he uses you know and uh, and consider um, he he's uh, not really uh, it, it's something foolish and something we don't recognize you know and this this is normally how we picture and look at things and uh, Satan is and his uh, emissaries uh, are not spoken of um, in polite educated um, more well-rounded uh, those with real understanding uh, they're not really spoken about in those kinds of circles which if I were the devil it'd be exactly what I want I want people to get to the place where my name's not brought up I'm not included in the conversation uh, nobody references me just act like I don't exist for right now you do know later on he's gonna want everybody physically openly to praise him and glorify him as though he is God that's what he's always been after but right now he does his best work if you would in the shadows not being mentioned and yet he's very much at work now we all know this when I bring it up there's even a lot of preachers nowadays that to preach on hell uh, they don't want to do that to bring up the devil other than in an education type way uh, they really don't talk about him as an integral working hindrance to everything of God and us and it's just the way we go about our life um, we we talk about him or people do as kind of like a uh, as we grew up in in church we we'll call it church uh, as what the devil is is simply a personification uh, a made-up thought because of the way we were taught since we were little but we know better than that now most of us would not say that I don't really think he exists but sometimes we live and act as though we don't believe that God's Word however uh, makes it very clear that he really exists if God knows he exists 
and he also fought against our Savior, you would think that we know that he absolutely exists. Uh, his aim, of course, is to destroy man, man as a whole, and uh, the, he, he definitely, personally, uh, is going after the Christian, those who are saved, not to destroy us, because he can't. But what he's after is the destruction uh, of our testimony and to bankrupt our influence for the cause of Christ with other people. And so he, he's very much at work. And um, the devil is a real adversary. Uh, while you're sitting at home, while you're struggling with things, you, you, you got to look at not just the bigger picture, revelation type stuff, though that's where it's going which goes to make sense on why certain things may be happening here because of the end result. But we get so caught up in the here, we've lost sight of that. And then all the things going on, we, we've really kind of lost sight of, wait a minute, what is going on? Who would want this? What is this leading to? And I'm not talking about conspiracy theories and making stuff up. He's really working. He's really at it. For example, Satan often comes, the Bible teaches, as an angel of light. How could he do that? Posing, posing as in truth or culture or education or, or, or even religious good. Okay? Good. He dresses in garments um, of spiritual advancement and seeks to lend men astray. What I mean by that is this. He doesn't come with uh, chains and scars and, and uh, symbols of the devil and, and know what he does. His ministers, many of them, are ministers of, watch, righteousness. You say, well, that'd be hard to spot. Mm -hmm. Unless you really knew how God described him, the devices that he uses. And yet today, well, you know how we do. I really like that guy. He's so nice and pleasant. He's a great teacher. But he really never exposes the devil, the full cause of God. He talks a lot about character building and, and how to strengthen people and all those positive, nice things we like to hear about ourselves. Underneath this pleasant exterior, this, this thin sugar coating, this veneer, um, <clears throat> lies a very bitter pill uh, that will cause people to be destroyed. And, and uh, there's, a, there's a real fatal dose um, of error. And so uh, I, I'm going to bring up a point here in a minute. Also, if the devil cannot deceive, destroy, mislead as an angel of light, then the Bible said he is, a, he is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Uh, sheer brute force, pushing himself, uh, demanding, shoving, um, scaring uh, the schemes that he has uh, across our landscape today, uh, which so willingly, I'm not talking about our American rights. I'm not talking about uh, our rights as human beings. Uh, sometimes we get our constitutional rights and our personal freedoms, which we have here in America right now, mixed up and believe those are almost God biblical given. No, this is God's biblical. I'm sorry. He doesn't mention anything about the United States of America or the Constitution of America. And you can say, I believe God did. Okay, that's fine. I do too. But let's not get those mixed up of our personal rights and our American living in America rights with biblical rights because you'll get a lot of things mixed up. And uh, the devil uh, is, I mean, look around you. If he's not morally and mortally attacking and shredding not just mankind but Christians. Stop and think about it. The way he goes about that. So if he cannot mislead with sugar-coated teaching and, and, and being the good guy and hey let me help you out and hey let's think about things this way uh, but he never really gets to a problem. He never nails anything really down. Then he will attack like he's doing around the world right now. Christians are being beheaded. Uh, they're being beaten to death. They're being put in prison. People totally forgot about them. And, and so he attacks that way. And then uh, when all other methods fail, uh, he seems to, and this is the part that concerns me the most in America right now, especially among Christians, 
uh, he gets Christians to simply neglect their spiritual birthright. We have accepted as being clean, American, moral, living, caring people. Anybody hear what I just left out? Christianity. Our Christianity. If he can, if he can induce us uh, to just keep busy in worthwhile efforts, okay, taking care of our family and uh, uh, providing for a living, and see, all of those come so close to the truth of God. Even much of it is, but he uses it to mislead, and we have to be careful of this. Uh, if he can keep us busy, uh, and what he does, watch, watch, to show you how it works, he's keeping good people, born again good people, away from Bible study, their prayer life, their walk with God, their conversation about God and the Bible all the time. Then he knows that pretty soon we're going to be spiritually bankrupt, spiritually ruined. We'll be spiritual paupers. We become impotent. I mean, just no power, just existing cleanly, uh, but we don't recognize him. We have a real adversary. We have a real adversary. So while we sit at home or maybe even here at church, or we just, we're not hurting anybody. That, that's a big tool the devil uses as I must be right because <laughs> I'm not hurting anybody. I'm a good person. So what harm is that? Uh, it, no different than the days of Noah and other times. They were marrying and giving in marriage and, and building and God sent a flood and destroyed him. You know what they forgot? You know what they left out? God. And so sometimes the devil will use be an angel of light to mislead and direct in teaching and guiding that way. If that doesn't work, he's as a roaring lion. He will attack and destroy and rip and f almost forcing his will upon this world. And then if that doesn't happen to the Christian, um, everything's okay. I'm doing well. Um, Really, I don't think it's quite that bad. And we just kind of ease into a law and, and, and almost fall to sleep spiritually um, and just think we have forgotten. We have an adversary and his name is the devil. Some years ago, uh, again, I read a story about a uh, atheist that lived in Europe who had a rather large farm and he bequeathed that farm to the devil in his will. You see, you can't do that. Well, he did. And the desire of the man was to leave his property, just leave it alone, absolutely untouched by human hands uh, from now on. Well, as many decades went by, needless to say, the whole farm, whatever structures there were, they begin to, to fall down, to rot away. Um, the nice farm at one time now was overgrown with weeds and thistles and, and untrimmed trees. And I mean, it just basically turned into almost a wilderness and an eyesore for the whole community. Everybody recognized it and everybody was out. What happened? Well, that belongs to the devil now. That belongs to the devil now. And so what happens is there was just, watch, plain neglect. Nobody came in and sowed uh, wild oats or, or uh, weeds or thorn trees. Nobody came in with hammers and saws and beat buildings down till they started falling apart. No, it was just neglect. Just simply a neglect uh, produced all of these evil and negative results. Just not taking care of what a person should take care of. And so many times the soul of a man becomes very unfruitful very unfruitful, and he becomes a uh, pawn uh, of the devil, being used to the devil, uh, because he fails to to live within the grace and power of God. When you when you're living close to God, you recognize evil. You and I, and I mean not just evil as a force, but the devil as a personality, as a real being. And I just wonder sometimes, there we are sitting at our house. Okay, we're a little bored. Uh, okay, we wish we could get out. Uh, okay, we wish we'd go eat once in a while or, or maybe even go back and start attending church. But in all of this, in all of this, understand behind everything that's going on, this is his kingdom he's trying to set up. 
That's his end result. He'll finally get everybody under his control by one of these means, all of these means, and then say, I'm God. What he meant was, I'm the God of this world. He could not get praise in heaven. God kicked him out of there. God, he sent him down to here. God gave this world to man. The devil was left out in the cold, so to speak. And he said, not going to happen. This is my place. I am the prince and power of the air. I am the God of this world. Even God said that. And now we sometimes have forgotten all this. When you're sitting at home and you're talking politics and you're talking issues and you're talking education and you're talking survival, can I say something? Did anybody bring up his name or his purpose? Are we really becoming ignorant? Not, not willfully, but out of neglect. When we mention that, what do our kids think? What does our spouse think? Why didn't we bring up his name? Charles Finney, the great revivalist and preacher of long ago, said this, If you don't believe in the devil's existence, try resisting him for a while. And you'll believe in it. Think about that. You don't think he's there? Then resist not talking about him. Talk about him. Resist doing evil, thinking evil, behaving in any evil or sinful way. Uh, try to do good. Just start doing good. Evil will be present right off the bat. And you will find out if he cannot by others to smoothly talk you away from that, then he will attack. If he cannot attack, he'll try to use something I think works extremely well here in America with American Christians. Just don't bring it up. Just ignore it. Just neglect. And you'll find out that your own life will be overgrown with thorns and thistles of this world and begin to just take over that which you have built will begin to fall apart and decay uh, rather quickly. And so please understand the devil's there. I know you just got your checks. I, I know that you'll still be able to go on. And I know you're still hopeful that our government will do this and, and this will be okay. And we reassure each other that it'll be okay. Uh, the devil's trying to destroy you, your family, the work of God, the cause of Christ, and get every Christian to just simply, don't worry about it. But he's there. Do you know in the early church that made Christianity really explode was persecution? There's something about telling somebody you can't pray that makes them want to. There's something, it's our natural rebellion, believe it or not. There's something about saying you can't go to church that we straighten up our shoulders and go, wait a minute, something's wrong. And it's right. It, something is wrong. And again, the devil is simply saying, No, look, see, nothing's being hurt. It's going to be okay in a few weeks. Every time that we give in, every time that we ease up, every time you see something like this going on in the world. You know, the last time there was a volcano or fires or um, hurricanes, right? Tennessee, Texas, places like that right now, mudslides, um, um, uh, lack of rain for months in some areas. What do we talk about? The news, the weather, uh, they deserve it or they don't deserve it. When's the last time you saw, recognized your adversary, the devil? Folks, he's real. He's not done. He didn't die. He didn't give up because we're all pulling together and washing our hands and we now have some uh, rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> he didn't die. He's out there. He's coming after you. The more you live for God, the more he's going to try to destroy you. Please be careful. He didn't die because really nothing's going on right now. Nothing bad. Be careful. The devil is an adversary. You don't believe it? You don't believe it? Just try to do right according to the Bible. You'll be in for the fight of your life. Maybe that's why some don't. But the thing is, I'd rather go down fighting for Christ. And I don't mean politically. I mean standing for right, telling what's right, living right, proclaiming what's right. That's what I'm talking about. You're going to find out your mind will be attacked. Your family will be attacked. The cause of Christ will be attacked that you're a part of. You'll find out he's real, real quick. 
but greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. God has blessed us with all of this. But don't forget, he wants to sift you as wheat, not to pull out the good wheat, but to find the dirt, the weakness, the helplessness that you have. And he's going to use it against you. Be careful, my dear Christian friend. Pray today, read your Bible, talk about the Lord. Don't forget about the devil. He doesn't need to be praised. He doesn't need to be elevated. He needs to be recognized, understood, and let's not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Thank you so much. Uh, sure would be nice to see you on Sunday, but I don't think that's going to work yet. It's coming. It's coming. And then we'll all get together. Boy, we're going to have a good time when that happens. All right? Have a good day. Bye-bye. Don't tell me like I wish it was. Preacher, tell me like it is.